Okay, so now that we have our little scene, just quickly before we um, create a camera and uh, set up some lights, there's a website called 3dscans.com uh, where you can go and download some free 3D scans, some high-res geometry, um, and, uh, and use them to render and test stuff with. Um, it's super helpful when setting up shaders to get things with uh, uneven geometry and uh, when you're just playing around, it's, it's easier to just work off a base. And these are great bases. But yeah, good website. Cool. So jumping back into Houdini, we have our little scene here. If we jump up to the object level, what I'm going to do is just hit P to hide our parameters so that we can see a bit better. We've got our backdrop. Uh, let's call this our table. Um, we have our arch. Our vase, and let's call this a obelisk. Obelisk. Ob obelisk. Yeah. Okay. Um, so just for cleanliness' sake, let's select all of these, and then just go up to the um, uh, this little button here. Uh, click it, and it will throw down this little backdrop. And let's just. Move these over, and let's call these OBJ. Now, if you don't like gray, just hit C, and this little um, color palette comes up. And if you click it, it will um, just change the color of whatever you have selected. So I think even if you take these nodes and hit red, uh, it will change the node color. I'm just going to undo that. So these are our objects. Um, now, what I'm going to do is grab a camera from the shelf tool over here. Um, so if you just if you just click on any shelf tool, um, if you click on it, it's going to ask you to uh, place it uh, in the scene. So I don't usually like doing that. You see it just created a camera there where I clicked. Uh, the same goes for like um, a box or any object. It will say, where do you want it to go? And usually, I like creating things uh, at the center. So if you hold down Command uh, or Control if you're on Windows, just hit Command and click on the camera. And that's going to create a camera where your current viewport is. Um, just to demonstrate further, if you click Command and click on the box, it's just going to create a box at the origin, at 0, 0, 0. So, yeah, I usually, whenever I, I hit the shelf tools, uh, I hold down Command or Control again. If, um, uh, if you're going to use these, any of these shelf tools, it will just create it at the origin, uh, and it's so much easier. So I'm going to hit P to bring our parameters back again, and I'm just going to zero out this camera. So uh, if we just hit zero a bunch of times, and then where it says translate for X, Y, and Z, I'm just going to hit 3 to move backwards 3 meters. Let's go 5 meters in uh, the Z direction. Um, and then let's just go 0.5 to move this up, maybe 1. Um, and let's actually move our camera way back. So let's go, say, maybe 10. We're going to need a lot more. If we go to the view, so you see we're pretty far away. Uh, if we go to view and just change our focal length to 125, um, let's maybe go 150, and let's move our camera up a little bit. But actually, what I'm going to show you is um, usually I only keep the camera um, translated in the Z direction, and I'll show you why. So right now, we are basically pointed straight at uh, the grid. That's why we can't see it anymore. If I move up, we can start to see the grid. But instead of moving around with just the camera, what I'm going to do is hit Tab and type down a null, and then connect the camera to the null. So this is just a null object. The transform axis is at the origin, 0, 0, 0. And now if we move the null up, um, it will move the camera as well. This is really handy when you have objects at the origin um, because uh, I like to kind of keep things simple with just using rotations. Um, and uh, we can start to uh, rotate around the origin 
just by using the null. So if we jump back into our... Uh, so here's the thing with a camera. Uh, let's just disconnect this quick. To move around, uh, <laughs> this stumped me the first time I used it, but uh, when you hit Alt to start moving around, you'll notice that it looks like the camera's moving, but as soon as you unclick your mouse, uh, you'll notice that the camera did not move and it's still in its same place over there. So what you need to do, let's just um, go up here uh, where it says no cam, click cam one. And then what you want to do is hit the lock button. So now you are locked to whatever you are viewing through. So now we can move around with actually moving the camera. Okay, I do not know what happened there. Okay, so this just happened. Um, I think I jumped inside the null, it looks like. Um, but what happened was our scene view just disappeared. Uh, we're now at, uh, we now have a duplicate of this. So to fix that, just go over to the plus button, go uh, new paint type and hit scene view. And let's jump back to our camera. And now we're back. So I'm just gonna move this back to where it was and then delete this. And, and there we are. So I'm just going to zero this out again. Where were we? Like 50. OK. Connect this back up. You'll see our camera goes back to the rotation that it had. Hit zero. Uh, let's go up by, say, two. Let's actually go three. Quite a big scene. And let's start creating some lights and rendering this. So we're just going to leave our camera just like that. Um, you can hit the backdrop again and just type cam. Let's make it all fancy and change the color. So backdrop selected, uh, change to green. Okay, so now lighting. Um, so that's cameras. That's pretty much all, uh, all you need to do. Uh, let me show you this quick. Um, so let's uncheck our camera so that we don't accidentally move it. Uh, hit spacebar one. I guess we are already in perspective and let's just move out of the camera. Hit space H uh, to just home everything. And there you see it showed, uh, it showed us the whole scene. Uh, if, I, if I have the camera selected and hit uh, spacebar F, it will go straight to the camera. So let's do this. And the one thing with the camera, uh, let's just select it. And it's way back there. What uh, we need to do, so you'll notice Houdini has a couple of these panels. Uh, our toolbar just got hidden. So if you just hit that little arrow, it comes back. You can do that with a bunch of these things. You might uh, want to render depth of field. Uh, and it might look a little strange or like uh, super blurry. And that's because if we have our camera selected, where it says um, sampling, here we go. Uh, so this is where you would set your f-stop. And basically, the higher the f-stop, the less depth of field there's going to be. The lower the f-stop, the more depth of field there's going to be. So um, for now, we'll just keep it at 5.6. But currently, this is the end. Uh, this is where the camera's... Um, focus is. So we need to change that. So I'm just going to select Z and just move this back until we get to our object. Now, I mean, we have moved the camera back 50 units, so usually it's not as far. So say we wanted this to be our focus. Now when we render, we will get a proper focus with the right depth of field, which we set at our f-stop. So you need to have the camera selected and you need to have the transform controls enabled. Um, so if I hit select, you see it disappears. So you need to hit this button for the transform controls to get or easily set uh, where your depth of field is gonna be. Cool, so that's, cam that's cameras for now. That's all, all we need to do. Um, what we are going to do now is hit tab, type ENV for environment light. Just click that and click it down. So now um, we have an environment light. Nothing's really changed. Uh, we need to uh, set our environment map here. So I'm going to hit this icon and uh, I'm just going to navigate to where my textures are. So this is a website um, where uh, you can get a whole bunch of free HDRIs. 
They're really, really nice. You can support uh, Greg, Greg Zahl. Um, he cruises around and creates uh, these awesome HDRIs uh, that we can use for free, which is super cool. Um, so take a look, there's a whole bunch of different options. I've just gone to the studio look. Uh, I usually use the studio when uh, I'm doing some look development stuff, just because you get all around lighting. Um, and uh, for this sake, let's use um, Small Studio 3. Cool. So we're going to use Small Studio 3, which I have already downloaded. So if we jump back here, we're going to go to Small Studio 3. And what I've done is I have just created another HDR that has been desaturated. So I don't have any uh, color pollution from, uh, from the HDRI source, uh, just so that when I'm looking at materials, it's, uh, the light is neutral. Uh, and then I've also desaturated and blurred a version, which gives a softer, a softer light. Uh, but for now, let's just click um, Accept. And if we, you'll see, uh, we now have an environment light in our scene. And it looks like we're coming from left to right, uh, right to left here, which is good, at least for now. So with the environment light, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, you can transform it around like this, um, you know, whichever way you want. We'll we'll get into that now. So uh, at the moment, everything uh, in the viewport isn't isn't getting any light. So if we want to have a better representation, we can come over here. Um, I kind of uh, toggle between these. Uh, I'm sure I think this one, you know, we get a little bit of uh, light direction in the viewport. So if we transform this, we should get an update um, of where, uh, where the light is kind of coming from. Okay, we don't. So let's jump down to this one. There we go. So now we get a better representation of where our light is. And if we rotate it around, this is what we get. So let's maybe find, I want 180. So we're going to have the light coming from the right to the left. Let's maybe rotate it. Just hit this transform control. And then let's rotate it so that we get Let's get something like that for now. It looks pretty bright. Um, so let's see how the, the renderer handles it. Let's actually just knock it down because I think it's going to be too bright. Let's go to 0.5. Okay. So that's our environment light. Uh, for now, we are just going to use one of these and we will throw down an area light probably a little bit later. So um, I'm just going to save my project by hitting uh, Command S or File Save. Um, now we have our light, we have our objects. Now we need to create a render node. Uh, so I'm just going to jump into our camera so that we can see what's going on. And what I'm going to do is come up to the top here where it says render, click render, go to create render node. And what I'm going to do is create a mantra PBR. Click on that. And it takes us to our out context now. So we went from object to out, and this is a ROP. This is a mantra ROP, which is just a render operator. So it's pretty straightforward. Uh, mantra, I, I really like the way mantra calculates everything. It's all additive. Um, it's physically accurate. It might take a bit longer than, uh, than other renderers, but yeah, it does a good job. I, I like the way that... Um, that it works. So just coming over from images, let's go to rendering. And this is what I do. So you'll see that we have physically based rendering. There's also ray tracing, micro polygon rendering, which I think is for curves uh, and particles and stuff. Ray tracing and physically based rendering is, you know, there's not too much difference, but for the sake of it, I like using PBR or physically based rendering. Um, so over in limits, we're just going to bring our reflection limit down to three, our refraction limit down to three, and then let's just get rid of our diffuse limit right now. So this is global illumination. Uh, this um, 
essentially right now, once the light hits our objects, it's not going to bounce. Uh, if we had, say, a, uh, a red box and we wanted it to come up on our background and cause some color around, uh, we would pump up our diffuse limit. This means that the light is going to hit the red box, um, it is going to absorb some of the color and then bounce again onto another object and transfer that color. Um, so for now, let's just keep that down. Uh, go over to our sampling. And this is essentially all you really need to worry about. Um, like the limits um, uh, is just basically saying limit everything to, in the reflection, limit it to three bounces. In the refraction, limit it to three bounces. An interesting thing is that if you have a lot of refraction, so if you have a lot of glass in your scene, this is very handy. So once it reaches the ray limit, it is um, going to use the black background. So after three bounces, say this was glass, this was glass, and this was glass, and it was all next to each other. Uh, light rays that are traveling from uh, this object through this object and through this object will probably only land up uh, coming out at the end here, and it will not get absorbed by uh, this object because it's travel. It, it, there's too many bounces, uh, and we've currently limited it to three. So at the ray limit, you can say use direct lighting as background color, and that essentially is a cheat to um, basically say once it reaches its limit, use the HDRI and environment light that we just threw down to replace. Um, uh, the, the black background that you would see. So if you are rendering a hall of mirrors, you probably want to use, uh, use this option because the amount of bounces you are going to need uh, is probably terrifying. So, um, so that's all for this tab right now. Uh, let's go to sampling. So pixel samples. This is your direct samples. And then everything underneath here are your indirect samples. So um, we'll, we'll set up a few things and then I'll go through this um, a little more uh, in depth so uh, you have a better understanding. But for now, we're just going to keep it at default. We're going to say three by three um, pixel samples uh, and we will leave everything else uh, at its default. So now I'm just going to hit file save again. Now we can come over to our render view and where it says ROP camera. Let's change that to our camera one and then just hit render. Okay, there we go. We have something. Um, so it's not pretty right now, um, but we'll change that. Just to show you guys quickly, especially in the render view, there are a couple of hidden panels. So say I'm zooming in and I'm looking at something. If I want to be able to fit the image to my screen, if I click this little arrow here or actually anywhere on this panel, uh, these options will drop down. So uh, we can click this little home button to go to the original size, or we can click uh, these little arrows here and it will make it the actual size of our, um, it will just fit the size of our image to the screen that we are currently in, uh, which is super handy. And then down here, if you click this panel, um, we can shuffle through the red, green, and blue channels as well as the alpha channel. Um, that's not relevant right now because we don't have any color. Uh, we can take a snapshot. So hit the snap button and now we can go back to, if we change things, especially in uh, um, when we are updating materials and stuff, it's nice to snap so that you can see where uh, the changes have come. Uh, you can up the brightness, uh, go down in brightness, uh, change the gamma as well. Um, for now, we'll just keep that at one. Um, and yeah, um, there's another little panel over here. We can enable our rulers uh, and it gives us a few other options. Um, and yeah, I usually um, always use one, if not all of these panels. So uh, they are hidden when you first start. So I'm just gonna stop this render and let's jump back to our scene view. And what we're going to do is, uh, let's just go to our objects, let's go to our environment light, and let's just zero out this rotation. And let's see what that gives us. Um, let's go 
180. Let's see what this gets us. So hit render. Now we have some interesting stuff happening with a hard light. Okay, just to quickly make some adjustments, let's stop this. Um, let's go to our light, let's go to point three five. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is jump back to our scene view and I'm gonna go to, let's jump into our table. Uh, I'm just gonna disable, this is the disable flag, the transform, so now this is uh, right in the center. Um, let's actually move it back. Let's not move it all the way there. Select, go to transform. And let's just move this forward a bit. Jump to our top view. And let's grab our vase. And then obelisk. Okay, perspective view. Cool. Just wanted to pull that forward out of the out of the shadows. Um, so let's take a snap and let's hit render again. Now I'm going to show you something here that um, we're currently rendering uh, with the IPR, um, so that we can see a preview quicker. And then this little button is um, whenever you make changes, it will update. So if I uncheck that, and then I change our light here, nothing's going to update. But as soon as I hit that checkbox, um, now we see that it updates. And if I say go, let's just go negative 30, um, you see now it updates. So what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm just going to try find a nice frame um, where I like the lighting. So I'm just going to play around with uh, different values here. This looks pretty interesting. Just go back to what we had. Let's go with more punch. Cool. Let's just leave it, we can always change it a bit later. Let's just leave this at 180. Let's go 0.2. So now we have um, just a little scene we have a camera, we have a light, um, we have a render node, which we are currently rendering things from. Now, um, what I'm going to do is just make uh, some small adjustments, and then we are going to get into, we are going to get into shading and making this look nice. And we'll probably add another light as well before uh, we call it quits. So yeah, let's, let's do that. <laughs> 